Rich, welcome back to Molson X Rebel Across live on the score with one of the veterans for the Montreal Express, Ted Dowling. You guys know how to score goals. You and Tracy Kolesky, quite a one-two punch out on the floor. Oh, Tracy's a great guy to play with, and uh, he's leading the right side. Uh, we expected it from him this year, and he's just uh, really exceeded his expectations. You guys had a couple of tough losses there, especially the one against Columbus that slipped away, but really turned things around on Friday against Ottawa. Yeah, we need these two games. Uh, we have to win these. Uh, we have to be strong. And yeah, we did lose those those two ones. That was very difficult for our team, but we came back, practiced very hard, and uh, we're ready to take these two on the weekend. Thanks a lot, Ted. This has been another Molson X Bench Report. 31 years old, 10th year pro, dominates at this level and does a pretty good job in the summer as well as he led the WLA in scoring with Victoria in a 95-point campaign. Well, it's obvious that Dowling and Kluski are the leaders of offensively on this team. And Terry Sanderson, the coach of the Montreal Express, has no problems with his offense. And you saw it in the first half, first quarter. They, they can make things happen out there. Dowling's been around so long, he played with two franchises that don't exist anymore. <laughs> Detroit, Boston, Buffalo, Rochester, Albany, Buffalo again, and now with Montreal. He's a man to watch, and he could be propelling Montreal into a bigger lead here. The Rebels certainly hope not, as Andrew Leishon and the defense try and dig in here to start the second quarter. Dowling on the far wall, being pressed by Rory Graham. Now Naganosh tries to take his man. Gets picked there, and Dowling gets sprung free, and another delayed penalty on the play. Dowling, nice play, knocked down there by DJ Sear. Grab the stick right over his hand. Grab the stick right over his hand. Right here. Yep. Well, you heard the comment from the referee, and I think it was Czech Couture making the call there. Grab the stick right out of his two hand minutes. is what he said. Oh. It's going to be a two-minute holding penalty, and you can't right, do you that. Right well, hands. not when Montreal's one for one with the extra call. man and uh, obviously possessing a ton of weapons. Yeah, let's see if we can pick it up on the replay. Oh, yeah, there yep. it is right there. And that is a penalty in any sport where you got to stick as a as a offensive threat. Montreal's power play was humming at 68 percent going into this game, and obviously one for one will up that just a tad. Now onto their second, it's Koleski behind the back. Oh, what a sweet pass and a better save by Leishon there on Richard. Koleski far side, nice deflection there. I think it was DJ Sear got a stick up on the play. Up the floor, oh, opportunity denied for Ottawa as Jamie Roy was sprung free. Too many men. Well, we got a penalty to, Too early in the change. to yeah, Montreal here, and it's a too many men. That defender left the bench too early, and in this league, that's a penalty on the offense, or on the defensive ball. He did not get out of the bench early My enough ball. on offense. It was the defensive man that came back and prevented Kyle Laverty from having the breakaway. I thought Bruce Codd was going to serve it, but they've made a last second change, so Codd is still on the floor, and we've got four on four. Little four on four action, Brian. Now, Mike Benedict's got the ball, Gil, and he's on pace for a career season after getting uh, 57 points last year with Columbus. Yet, do you sense that you can still get more out of Mike Benedict? Well, I think Mike Benedict would admit that he's not having one of his best seasons so far, but the stats would disprove that. And it just doesn't seem like he's getting involved enough in the action. And for him, he's he's the veteran on this team at 30 years of age. He's, he's the old man. He's got to make things happen out there. Nice passing play. Dowling Koleski and finished by Jason Crosby as Leishon makes the save. He don't. He's gone to the last two Minto Cup finals with Burnaby, winning one and losing one, and is poised to get there again as he says the franchise is looking strong to get there for a seventh consecutive year. Right now, his main focus is on this game, and it's another delayed penalty against Ottawa. And it's Ryan Painter going to the box with the wraparound holding penalty. I wanted to, to ask you about the rule change this year and the fact that holding was going to be called more often. Uh, we're seeing it maybe a little bit today. Have you noticed it more uh, this year, though? I mean, do you, I mean, I don't think the power plays have been up by a wide margin. But you're seeing a lot more of it. And any time a defender takes one hand off the stick and only has one hand checking, uh, the referee's going to be looking for the hold because that free hand, Tennessee does grab the sweater. Richard stopped by Leishon. There were four on three for 20 seconds. That would be four on four again before another Montreal power play. Well, look at that. The Ottawa Rebel down two men, four on three, shorthanded, and they're still going for goals. I like it. Oh, 
Great save by Alation. Up the floor, four on four situation. Oh, Rory Graham out of the box. Cannot beat Curtis Palador. And Palador had no idea where that ball was. Nice try by Rory Graham. Montreal on the attack. Behind the back from Dowling to Crosby, doesn't connect. 12 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Brian Duff and Gil Neuendijk. You're watching Molson Export Rebel Lacrosse here on the score as Ottawa tries to get back in it. Four on four for just two more seconds. Then it'll be another Montreal power play. Opportunity knocking for Graham, and he scores! Oh, well, Roy and Graham. 30 seconds earlier was denied, but this all started with a great loose ball by DJ Sear, taking a big hit on the on the boards. And Graham moving up floor, had Jamie Roy with him, a two-on-one, used Roy as the decoy. Defender, as you can see, elects to go to Jamie Roy, and Graham made no mistake putting that ball behind Palador. So Rory Graham gets his second of the year. It's short-handed because the uh, Bruce Codd penalty has just ended, so while it was briefly four on four, it actually became the Montreal power play when Graham was taking possession of the ball. So, huge goal for Ottawa, to say the least. And Graham's got to be happy with that, because two late penalties in the last game cost his team somewhat, and then an early penalty this game gave Montreal a, a little bit of momentum. It's good for him to get that goal back. Let's take a look at Graham. And uh, he's not noted for his offense, obviously. His career high was five with Toronto back in 1999. Right? Well, watch his, as you saw there, his eyes. He was always looking at Jamie Roy, and Palador had to be conscious of that because in lacrosse, a quick pass, and you're at a position, you haven't got a chance. And I think Palador was looking for the pass over to Jamie Roy, looking at Graham's eyes, and Graham took the shot, and Palador wasn't ready for it. Tim McCall back in the score studios. The Buffalo Sabres looking for win number four in a row as they are facing the Capitals at the phone booth. It was one nothing Caps when Todd Roloff gambles and loses. Stu Barnes brings it down, shoots and scores. 15th of the year, tied at one apiece. Let's get back to Canada. Ottawa short for 55 seconds more or less. As Ryan Painter is in the box. But they're only down by two, and this sets up Ottawa quite well for the remaining portion of the first half. Well, a timeout called by um, Lindsey Sanderson. He must be seeing something that he likes or dislikes, and just want to make sure everybody's got the same message. And I think that message is going to be ball control. Far too often, they're giving the ball away early in the offensive attack. And you can't score many goals if you don't have the ball. And when you're giving it, giving it up five seconds into your offensive threat, uh, that's not going to win many games. Harrison, Kalaski. Bending on the far side, Dowling out there as well. And Richard, the five-man power play unit, or man up, if you will. And Ottawa's got a break. They've got Jamie Roy up the middle, but Laverty hangs onto the ball. Laverty bounces one, tried to go five full, and a scoop shot, there it goes. I think it's Jamie Roy. <laughs> you gotta like it. Was that a wrist shot or a slap shot? <laughs> Either way, it's still a goal, and Jamie Roy, three of them, they're shorthanded, and we got three Ottawa Rebel heading for the net while they're down a man. And they got rewarded by crashing the net for the rebound as Jamie Roy basically takes a slap shot and scores a goal. He's got to be happy with that. Whatever works. Eighth of the year for Roy. Victoria native. And the Rebel are within one and still shorthanded. Heck, at this rate, they'll be taking more penalties. Evans on the loose ball team scoops it up and away they go there. What a successful kill of that penalty. Oh, absolutely. Two shorthanded goals in that round. This may be the inspiration that the Rebel been looking for. And it was a 5-2 game, now it's a 5-4 game. Ryan Painter went hard to the goal, couldn't come down with the ball. Here comes Bruce Codd, leaving it now for Amy Keynes. Looked like he had a man in the middle of the crease, but he couldn't get it to him and is now pressured by Kurt Johnston. Harrison, far side now. Teddy Dowling, high and wide. 
Bendig. Bendig picks it up. Oh, inside. Nice ball movement there, and it's finished with a nice save by Andrew Leishon. Amy Keynes had the opportunity to try and restore a two-goal Montreal edge. Well, you can see that the loose balls have really improved for Ottawa, and, and thus two goals. Great hustle on the loose balls while they're shorthanded. They're now within one goal, and the loose balls are 5-5 in this quarter. Commodore picks it up off the back of the twine. Threw it ahead to Parnell, but we have a timeout on the floor. Montreal with a one-goal lead. This is Paulson Export Rebel Lacrosse live on the school. You took a lot of flack in that opening victory against Vancouver for missing an empty net, but maybe you make up for it here by getting a dribbler past Palador. You know what, everyone, uh, everybody just wants to win a game. We've lost seven in a row now, and we all just want to work hard and win this one for everybody. Taking those goals any way they come, Brian. This is another Molson X bench report. Thank you very much, Patricia and Gil. 9.49 to go here in the second quarter, and obviously, uh, as you can see, Terry Sanderson looking down the bench for somebody to step up and restore the Montreal edge. Um, what have you, what were you anticipating that has transpired so far? Well, I've seen it in spurts. I expected a lot more fireworks and uh, motion from the Ottawa Rebel. Uh, we had a one scuffle there. They seemed to get him going, then they got into a penalty and it kind of slowed him down a bit. But two shorthanded goals may trigger some High emotion that which Lindsay Satterson wants to see from this team. Folks, make sure you tune in to score tonight with Greg Sansoni and Martin Geyer. They anchor the most comprehensive sports wrap-up every weeknight. It is the score tonight, and it's only on the score. 5-4 Express over Ottawa right now. Five on five as Todd Richard goes far side. Kalowski. No no Not a lot of room for him to move right now, but that doesn't usually stop him. Kalowski. No Still having a tough time Gil, getting a shooting lane, but when he does, he finds an opening on Andrew Leishon. Well, Tracy Kalowski, just, just tremendous lacrosse player. Great defense by Ottawa. The, def the uh, switching off and two-man support. But this is just a, a great shot that fooled Leishon because he was in position. It looked like it just bounced off the carpet and came up high. You know, when you say it like that, it makes me think of last year when we saw a great shooting performance from Roy Colsey of New York. Yes, absolutely. The leading goal scorer in the league right now. He tied with John Tavares last year for the goal scoring lead at 51. And, and Roy incorporates that great bounce off the field. You know, uh, th from the summertime field, and, and Koleski obviously has that experience as well. He played for Rochester in the Major League Lacrosse this past summer, and you, you just look at those pure shooters, and, and I find them so similar when they can pull off shots like that. Oh, absolutely, and that's why they are in the top of the league in scoring, because they have the ability to score from outside. They have the ability to score from inside, and you saw that the pressure that the Ottawa defense was putting on Tracy, and he still found a lane and an opening to shoot and it's the quick release that makes him different from all the other shooters in the league he just doesn't need much room and he can bury it i would never take anything away from the gates from the tavares the players like that but when it comes to pure shooting you, you have to think of, of colsey in new york you've got to think of marichek in philadelphia yep. and, and obviously John Grant jr and out of rochester wow there's yeah, just the so gates, many the gates yeah. and the tavares their power they get all their goals from their power their size and their speed not that john grant's a small guy no Oh, he's a big man, but uh, he can he can shoot from the outside just like Koleski can. So with a two-goal lead, it's Montreal on the attack again with less than 15 to go, and we have got a serious infraction as Ryan Painter is down, and there will be perhaps more penalties to come. I couldn't see who uh, who got Ryan Painter, but 
the Ottawa Rebel are sticking up for Painter and going after whoever it was. Amy Keynes punched to the head from the back on Painter. Maybe Ryan played it up a little bit. It was still drawing a penalty. Yeah. It was still worthy of a penalty. Well, you know, we're well, see the most of the time. as a teammate, you see a player down on the floor not moving and another guy walking away. You assume the worst happened. And it's good to see that the Ottawa team at least went after him, even though they didn't know what really happened. And it wasn't really much of a hit, but still worth a penalty. The Ottawa going to the power play. Stopped there by Palador. Second power play of the game for the Rebel. They are 0 for 1. And Dowling somehow manages to pick it up off the carpet away from Rory Graham and a stop by Leisha. And that could have been a killer shorthanded goal. Wow, what, what a play by Ted Dowling. On his back, still gets up with the ball and makes a tremendous play at the net. And see, that's, that's what makes this game great is because we just talked about a long list of players. They're all unique. They all have unique abilities, it seems. There's something that separates them. You don't compare Ted Dowling to others because of little plays like that. Yeah, exactly. And there's a handful of them in the league that have that ability, but there's there's lots of them in the lead that have the great offensive skills, either from the outside, the inside, the quick movement, the balance. Uh, this is just a tremendous sport, and we're starting to see a lot of shining stars in this league. Well, Ryan Painter and Chris Kanopoulos were hoping that they could have some power play success there, but instead it's uh, back over on that wide shot by Painter in Montreal possession. Yeah, exactly. Well, you look at Kanopoulos for the Ottawa Rebel. 15 goals so far this year. 14 of them from the right shooter spot from 40 feet from out from you the could, net. You could circle an area that is probably no wider than two feet around, like in a circle, a two-foot radius in a circle, and that's probably where Kanopoulos has scored all every, those goals. Every time, and a different type of shooter versus Koleski, but still effective in his own way. Dowling has his shot blocked by Guidon. And now Naganosh picks it up. 39 to go in the penalty. Dwayne Keynes. Tarbell out there because he scored earlier in the game. Danny Merrill, we haven't talked much about him. And the rebound off the Merrill shot is deposited by Evans. Well, Danny Merrill didn't play the last game. And I was a little surprised because I find him an o a great offensive player. He has a good hard shot from the field game down the States. He made a great shot from far out. Forcing Palador to throw his shoulder into it and send the rebound right to Stevie Evans. Just a great hard shot. And you see how far Palador is out on top of the, the crease because he knows how hard Dan Merrill can shoot the ball and he's got to get out there or it's going to blow right by him. Stevie Evans, right person at the right time, takes advantage of an open net and makes no mistake. Stephen Evans with his 12th goal of the year comes on the power play. Ottawa's first with the man advantage. Pretty much lived up to expectations so far. Close game, a little bit of nastiness. And a lot of heart. Yes. A lot of heart on both teams. And that's I don't what know, like I don't know how you couldn't when you have these two guys behind the bench leading into battle. Oh, absolutely. And because they played the other night, there, there could be a lot of hard feelings brewing here once players start taking a few hacks and whacks like we're seeing now in the corner. That we might get, we might get into a real Donnybrook later on. DJ Sears played a real nice game defensively, running the floor. Hands it off here to Benedict. Benedict would like to uh, get in a position to fire a little bit more. There's a nice backhand shot from Painter. Painter's an interesting story. He's one of the few guys, in fact, maybe the only guy on this Ottawa squad that Lindsey Sanderson has actually coached before. Yep. He had him in Orangeville. And Orangeville won a middle cup with Ryan Painter on that team. Shot wide there by Dowling. And the I, I, reason I say that it's interesting is because in this game, almost everybody has been coached by everybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, so to come into a situation like this for Lindsey, where it's his first pro head coaching position, Kind of strange that he wouldn't have actually had hands-on experience with some of the other guys. Yeah, exactly. Well, you got the Western connection, and then you got the Orangeville connection behind the benches. Then you got the Peterborough connection. Yes. So Koleski and Stevie Evans played together in Peterborough. Why don't oh, they shot there just nips wide. It was uh, Clayton Barnes. Here we go. Had a little 
shotcock violation there. We're going to get you up to date on some basketball. A rematch of last year's NBA Finals. The Lakers and the Sixers. Lakers, well, they're struggling. AI on the break. Lindsey Hunter, great block. Iverson left the game with a strained back, but was back to do this. Two of his game high, 29. Sixers win it. The Lakers have lost three of their last four. Take it away, Duffer. Montreal with the one goal lead, and they accomplished nothing on that offensive possession kill, so the Rebel with a chance to tie. Well, you got two teams playing for different reasons. Ottawa's playing, obviously, for a win. That's the first most on their, on their mind. And Montreal, on the other hand, they're fighting for a playoff position in that very tough central division where it's really log, a real logjam there. So a lot of spirit and a lot of hustle from both sides. Not that Montreal wouldn't have been fired up today, but seeing division leading Rochester lose yesterday to Toronto just opens the door that much more for them. And also makes them feel frustrated that they blew two games this year when Montreal could easily be 6-0. Here's Crosby trying to run the floor straight down the middle. Oh, nifty backhand one-hand shot stopped by Leishon. Wow, that was a great move by Crosby. 6-5, Montreal still in the lead. Leishon holding the fort. This is Molson Export Rebel Lacrosse on the score. Trying to track down, hunt down Jason Crosby. Gets two minutes, as you see Crosby trying to, a shot out of Jamie Roy's playbook. The underhand shot. And uh, uh, Leishon came up big, but Montreal's on the power play. Richard and Koluski, along with Harrison. Dowling on the far side, Harrison. Pass is intercepted, could be a two-on-one Rebel. Painter and Laverty. Laverty's got a free lane. Laverty bounces it over Palador. Good fast break nonetheless while killing well, the Well, you know what? The they, they've scored two shorter lane goals so far this game. They're trying for three, and they, they are not giving up. They are, doesn't matter how many men they have on the floor, they're going for goals. Nice, Sean. Recovering nicely and stopping Dowling right there. Oh, out the front door. He's got, oh, they're going to get called for an extra uh, two men. No, we've got a. Too many, guys. Too many. Yeah, too many. Auto yeah, penalty. I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. Yeah. Well, sometimes when you got success while well, you're shorthanded, you try to take advantage of the rule book, try to push the envelope as far as it can go, and, and they got caught this time. As you'll see, the attack man from the Ottawa Rebel bench comes off I think way too early. And you know what? It's uh, it's going to be crucial because now they're down for two men for over a minute. Todd Richard is stopped by Leishon. He has to come up enormous now. This is tremendous pressure that Leishon is facing. What a lift it would be for Ottawa if they could kill this. Koleski stopped by Leishon. Oh, great scoop by DJ Sear, and they'll be able to kill off at least 30 here. Unless you make a bad pass like that. Unfortunately, because there was not any pressure on him at that point in time. It looked like Montreal's al allowing Ottawa to kill off the 30 seconds, and they turn it over. 35 to go in the two-man situation, and a goal there for Montreal, as who else but Tracy Koleski goes up high while coming from down low. Well, I don't know what Tracy Koleski was doing down the crease there, but again, he found an open spot in the floor with his great vision on out there. And we saw the earlier goals where he's shooting from long range. This time he's right down on the crease and makes a beautiful play driving across the crease and tucking it upstairs as Leishan was going down. Not much Leishan could do about that. And now it's it's critical as Koleski gets the hat trick and we're not even out of the first half. To kill off the remaining 110 in the bench minor for too many men. Because again, two goals down at the half wouldn't be a bad thing for Ottawa. Now Koleski standing in front of the crease. Draws a lot of attention. And draws enough that Harrison can wire one right through Leishon. Wow, we've seen three different goals all involved in Tracy Koleski, although he won't probably get a point on this one. Going 
from the shooting position to the top of the crease just draws a number of defenders leaving Harrison a wide open shot in the lane. Montreal with their third power play goal of the game. This is Harrison with his eighth five year pro and former Ontario Raider before they became the Toronto Rock. Well, Dean Harrison from Alora, Ontario. We last came out, we saw against uh, Columbus another young and upcoming player, Casey Burns. From oh, what a performance he turned in in that game. And Leishon there with a nice stop. Zach Aitken was the last uh, Montrealer to get in position to score. Boy, you mentioned that Casey Burns. Columbus. Is Columbus is doing right now what we thought Ottawa might be able to do last year. Get the first win and see what happens. And once they did, all of a sudden Columbus wow. is four and four with a team that everybody pegs to be the youngest and most inexperienced and most likely to perhaps not succeed. And look at them. They're holding their own at four and four. Oh, they, they were expected to be the doormat of the league and they walked into Washington and beat them. Walked into Montreal and beat them. An overtime victory this weekend as well. Over and back against the Rebel once again. So they are on the power play, and that's not the way you want to get things started. Sean Zettel, the former Rebel, is in the box for Montreal. I don't want to say Zettel's half the man that he was last year, but he used to wear 88 in Ottawa. Now he's 44, so I don't know what that says, but. Uh, oh, good one, Brian. The fact, good one. The fact of the matter is that. Uh, the Express are trying to kill off Zettel's penalty. He didn't hit him, hit him here. And Ottawa will got, regain possession. They kill, they have to, they have to try and muster something. If they get back within two, it's a pretty good first half, wouldn't you? Oh, say? absolutely. You know, anything can happen in the third quarter. And we saw in the third quarter last time out on Friday that they played extremely well. Before that, they stunk in the first quarter. They were just awful. But they seem to solve that problem. And if they get one here, it's a whole new ball game. Painter over to Kanopolis, loses it, but retrieves in the corner. Has Evans with which to work. Has Benedict up high. Long range shot is swallowed up by Palador. Palador now tries for the pass break. And a good pass straight ahead to Matt Giles. Big Matt Giles hauls that one in, goes across the floor, over to Dowling. Dowling defended well by Benedict. Forced to go behind the goal. Dowling looks for a man, can't connect, but does get Bruce Todd back up high. 35 to go in the Montreal penalty. Amy Kane's busting in. Can't squeeze it through Leishon. Net comes off, but that doesn't really matter. You can still score even with the net ajar. That's right. Just break that plane. With the ball, we saw Evans do that a couple of times last year. I think. Tough enough for the goalies to do their job, but they have to have the nets on straight too. Brian Painter can't squeeze it through Bruce Cott. Great defense there by Montreal. And here they come once again. Aitken, I think. Sorry, Peter Locke in possession there. Timeout Montreal as they have 16 and a half seconds with which to work in the second quarter and are looking to make it a four goal cushion at the half. Well, Terry Sanderson knows how to play this game and he knows that the shot clock is not a factor when there's only 16 seconds left. So let's perhaps pull the goalie. Yep. Your shorthand and make it five on five. Actually, I think, no, they're back to even strength. Oh, they're even strength. So they're going to have the man advantage if they pull the goalie and create a play. No doubt it's going to involve Dowling and Kaluski. That's that's. Almost a guarantee. Folks, join Steve Cooley has scored Stellick, Rick Vive, Dennis Bayak, and Steve Lutzig as they bring you highlights, opinions, and analysis from every rink in the NHL. The ultimate hockey show is ice surfing here on the school. So Andrew Leishon makes the long walk back from the bench to his goal. And Palador doesn't have to leave his bench because that's where he's staying for the last 16 seconds of this quarter. Todd Richard starts it now for Montreal. Richard to Harrison. Far side, Giles. Harrison, near side, Koluski. Koluski wants, to, oh, what a back pass that was, and it failed down low. Right next to Leishon, the Express can't connect. 
the bases. And here's that Donnybrook you may have talked yeah, absolutely. about. Absolutely, and it was a late hit that started all this, and before you know it, we got right, three guys, or four guys, players guys, guys, jumping guys, on guys, top of each other. No cheap stuff, okay? No cheap stuff, boys. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow, what a pass by Koloski. Oh, a great, great pass. opportunity. I think it was Bendig off the far side that had the great opportunity. Koloski and Bendig, along with Richard, played together at the University of Hartford. Well, Koloski has such great stick skills. As you'll see, a quick run by, by the Montreal player in the corner while the back is turned on Graham. And Painter and... Kurt Johnson, DJ Sear, make no, they jump right in there and say, hey, you can't do that. He had his back turned and his head down. The half is over. Don't do that again, is what he's basically saying. In different words than that, though. There's a shot at Lindsey Sanderson as he has a few words for uh, probably the officials from long range, but uh, maybe to his players as well to just end the half now and uh, regroup for the third. Well, you know what? Their officials have a very difficult job here tonight because the last game was a very intense game also we'll, we'll and talk about it. they played lacrosse we'll about and the refereeing did a great job tonight you're going to expect a little more confrontation so to speak and so they got to stay on top of it but you want to keep the flow of the game going you heard the referees say we'll talk about it they have some sorting out to do as far as penalties from that practice patricia bowl i know is trying to get a word in with terry sanderson the head coach of the montreal express Patricia? The Montreal Express is the highest scoring team in the NLL, and Terry, some days is your job just as easy as pointing guys like Tracy Koleski and Ted Dowling to the net and letting them do their thing? No, when you're playing against a scrappy team like Ottawa, I, I think it's more difficult, uh, you know, than, than maybe even going up against uh, Toronto sometimes, because they're, they're guys, they just work so hard and they're in your face all the time. Part of our problem out here today, we're, you know, we're based on being a hard-working team, and some of our offensive guys are getting too cute, and uh, Lachien's, uh, you know, making the good stops, but you know, we just got to be a little more aggressive offensively. Is this exactly the kind of physical game you expected against Ottawa this afternoon? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they showed us the same thing Friday night, and uh, a lot of those guys are playing for some jobs, and they're tough to play against. Terry Sanderson's Montreal Express up 8-5 over the Ottawa Rebel and his younger brother, Lindsay. I know you wish him the best of luck after this afternoon. More second half action coming up after this. Twenty second at eight p.m. Eastern. Catch all the live action only on the Score. It is a rough and tumble first half. Express leading the Ottawa Rebel, who you see here in their dressing room. Eight five second half moments from now. But for now, a little score in game. And indeed, I hope you're enjoying the game, everybody. Tim McAuliffe here to get you caught up to date on the rest of the sporting world as the Express and Rebel get ready for their second half. First stop, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as the AFC Championship is coming to a surprising close. The word destiny has been tagged on the backs of the New England Patriots, yes? Scraping through their divisional playoff game against the Raiders, and now 10-point underdogs as they face the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that man, Cordell Stewart, and the word destiny, well, something... ...three moments left in the third quarter of this affair. As for later on today... the second half of the Ottawa Rebel and the Montreal Express. Montreal leads it 8-5 at halftime. of our 
National Lacrosse League action live from the Corral Center. More in-game to tell you about. Football not the only game in town. A couple of hockey games, also a couple of basketball games. We start with the Ballers, where the Toronto Raptors are hosting the Orlando Magic. This matchup turning into a wee bit of a rivalry with Tracy McGrady's departure and the Magic hammering the Raptors in the opening night. There's McGrady, there's the distant cousin, Vince Carter, and Vince blows by T-Mac to the rack. Count that off the glass. Then Vince, long deuce, wraps. 17 to 6. Vince, another jump shot. Vince, a tough. From the Corral Center after these. Block, good block. That's our ball. We need 30 boys. We need a full 30 seconds here. That's it. That's it. Full 30 again. Go! Right here! Why are we forcing the ball? That's it. Let's get the ball. Let's hold on to it for a little while. Come on! Get on him! Get on him! And on the defensive side, you can't let Kalowski have the ball down low on a one-on-one. -on -one. There's nobody in the league that can check him. That's what I'm talking about. Support on your own side. Go! 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 On! 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 Just do a good job here, boys. Runner up and out of trouble. Remember, we can't get all four of you coming off here. We need to always need our safety guys at the top if we lose it, okay? We just keep thinking the good stuff and we'll take care of this. And some people say curlers are loud. <laughs> I would say uh, Lindsey Sanderson doing a fine job behind the bench today. Oh, absolutely. And Lindsey Sanderson is a coach that wants creativity from his players. He takes pride in the run and gun offense and show some emotion out there and have fun, basically, and that's what he's showing. Well, you don't have much more fun than uh, scoring a pair of shorthanded goals. Oh, absolutely, and both those goals were, were a result of hard work, fast breaks, just very simple lacrosse. Make things happen, going down the floor, take a shot, and get rewarded with hard work driving to the net. And a little luck. He wants two-way players that can play both ends of the floor, and he wants them to have fun and show creativity out there and being short-handed, short-handed two times, scoring goals. That's creative lacrosse, and it's Lindsey Sanderson lacrosse at its best. Well, you heard Lindsey say there's nobody in the lead that can check Terry Gillespie down, or Tracy Gillespie down low. Well, it's pretty hard to check Chad Dowling when you think you've got him pinned to the carpet. What a, what a tremendous athlete. Combined strength with speed and a natural ability to find the open net. He is just a great lacrosse player. Well, the main stat that matters is obviously Montreal up by three, and you can see three power play goals to Ottawa's one. Clearly a difference in this game so far. The shots aren't where Ottawa needs to be. They've got to pepper Palador more. Oh, absolutely. And that's where it comes to making sure good shot selection and working the ball movement that we talked about the keys of the game. 15 minutes on the clock to start quarter number three here inside the Corral Center. And we do have a Montreal penalty to Ted Dowling on the play. The play, of course, we're referring to is that massive scrum at the end of the first half. Ryan Painter did draw a roughing penalty on the play. Ted Dowling got two minutes charging, two minutes roughing. So that's where the extra power play comes in. And Dowling will serve an extra two while Ryan Painter sits just for two. Well, after a six and eight power play the other night in Montreal, they kind of sputtered here, only one for three. They get one here. Like that one from Mike Benedict. Well, there you go, Brian. Mike Benedict, who's been somewhat quiet. But once this guy gets going, he usually scores in bunches, and, what, and it all stems from confidence. You're going to see a lot more shots from Mike Benedict now that he scored that big shot from way out. Because all it takes, this is a very 
emotional game, and when it comes down to confidence, and a lot of good things happen. And it's just a good hard shot. Not much Palador could do with that. Benedict's third of the uh, year on the power play. And it pulls Ottawa within two. He's trapping it. Black's trapping it. Black's. Gil, explain well, what's going on well, there. So there was about six guys on a loose ball. It was a loose ball, and the Montreal player just put his stick over top of it, and he made no attempt to move it. So you lose the ball, and it's Ottawa's ball now. Evans in scores! Stephen Evans! Stephen Evans talked about confidence with Mike Benedict. That's what Stephen Evans has been playing with for the last three games. Driving hard to the net, crashing the net, making good shots, shot selections, and taking advantage of a, not, I wouldn't say a weak defense, but a good hustle by his part to blow by the Montreal defender, Todd, who's usually pretty reliable, and makes no mistake. He is becoming one of the deadliest creasemen in the league, and we've seen a lot of it in the last three games. Stephen Evans has two today has 13 on the year, has reached a career high in points for his career, and this is second season. Wow, I was gonna comment on the third quarter, but Ottawa Rebel have been totally brutal in the third quarter all year long, except for the last game, and they're starting off hot here tonight. Evans trying for the tie. It is Jamie Roy on the doorstep, stopped by Palador. The Ottawa power play is now two for four thanks to that well, Brad, rally by Benedict to get it all started. Well, Brad Waters, when he made the coaching change, wanted a little more excitement in the building. And he's seeing that right now from his Ottawa Rebel team. And the crowd here seems to be responding to the effort that the Rebel are putting forth. Oh, what a stop by Matt Tischer, who's in goal to start the third quarter. Oh, they caught us by surprise there, Brian. I did not see that. Actually, I knew all along. I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Matt Tischer creating some spark here, perhaps. Well, he certainly comes up with an enormous save to keep it a one-goal game. Kanopla. Kanopla winds up. I'm not sure Palador saw that. It looked like it hit him more than he made the save. Oh, that was a good screen set up and a good good choice by uh, Kanopla. Oh, this shot. is not a good choice. Four on one, potentially, running the four. Montreal caught off the bar. Now it could be Ottawa back the other way, but it goes right into the stick of Giles. Montreal slows it down now. Pacey. Former OHL player with the London Knights played his first lacrosse game in three years the other night against Ottawa on Friday night. Reset! Disher with another save. He's lost it, but he's in his safe area known as the crease. Boy, Matt Disher is such an agile goaltender. He just does not stand still. He likes to move his body, his arms, his legs, his stick, anything to make the save. Evans and Kanopla. Highlighting this unit as Ottawa goes on the attack. Jamie Roy out there as well, and in tight. It was Benedict trying to beat Palador up high. Well, going to the net, that's the only way you're going to score goals in this league. They Two got the on one, shot Montreal. Goal. Bendig the far side, he's got the ball now. Disher beaten by Brian Bendig. That was a beautiful move by Bendig. Faked Disher over to the one side of the net and tucked it back in the near side of the net. Good goal, and it all started with the two-on-one, the transition game. Ottawa could not respond. Brian Bendick took advantage of that. Oh, what a great pass by Kaluski, though. The over-the-shoulder pass once more. Well, Tracy Kaluski had uh, five points in the opening half and uh, gets in on Montreal's first goal in this third quarter. Oh, yeah. And that was a beautiful pass. Bendick, it's, uh, I believe, just goal number two on the year good enough to give Montreal the two-goal edge. Here come the Rebels. Tarble chased into the corner by Todd. Back to Dan Merrill. Again, we haven't called his name an awful lot, Gil. Nope, just on that one power play. Merrill. Merrill's got a lane. Nice save by Palador as he scooped it up off the floor. But a great, good screen set up by Kanopla, free and Merrill there. Todd has a man at the center line. Now Montreal's into offensive territory. Amy Keynes cuts towards the goal. Dowling with a great spin move on Painter. Dowling, oh, stopped by Disher. We got some end-to-end -end action going on now, Brian. Kurt Johnston with some aggressive pursuit in the corner. And good loose ball recovery there by the Rebel to get it to Disher and start this play up the floor. Yeah, they're playing a very strong third quarter, something that we have not seen a whole lot of this year. Naganash 
to Evans. Nakanosh makes the change. Evans looks for a little support in the form of a pick. Passes off instead. Benedict outside. Pass across to Clayton Barnes. Uh, acquisition this week from New Jersey for a fourth round pick. Failed to go. Montreal stopped by Disher. As Pacey was again involved in the offense. We are going end to end, Gill. Jamie Roy loses the ball. Scooped up again, though, by Rory Graham. No, now it's Roy that gets the loose ball. Roy spins away from a tug by Crosby. I thought that could have been a hold, given the way they're calling it in today's NLL. They've got a penalty now instead. Parnell, I think, Come with right the here. slash. It looks like with slash on Parnell. And this is a result of Ottawa being tenacious at both ends of the floor. And you got to like the effort by Jamie Roy and Roy Graham, both of them working hard to get the ball. Jamie Roy taking a couple of big whacks there, and rightfully so, should have been called, and there should have been a penalty for the hold earlier. But Jamie Roy, who's not feeling 100% right now, a little bit of the flu going around, is playing a great game. Canopler. Canopla for Benedict. Now back to Canopla. That's his favorite spot. Palador, though, gets down. Go, Both knees, let's makes the save. Let's go! Let's go! God's got to get it out of the crease, and he does just in time. Cod now up the floor, and that's a great play. That's great pressure by Ottawa to force Cod into a long pass. He had no outlet. Yeah, only knocked off about five or six seconds off the off the clock, so that is great news for Ottawa. Fifth power play is well into it now for the Rebel. We've got a couple of goals with the extra man. Nice move by Painter as he tries to cut in. Back to Merrill, over to Kanoplin. Knopliff looks like Evans down low, passes it in the middle. Tarble can't connect. But good ball movement, just a little bit of uh, more sharper execution, and they would have had a good shot on net there. Well, that pass hits Rory Graham in the back. Oh, I'm my goodness. Well, who else could it be? It had, I, I'm assuming it was Ted Dowling, even though we couldn't see the number. My goodness, is he a magician? You're right, Brian. That was just a great effort by Dowling from his knees taking a one-handed shot. 45 seconds to go on the Ottawa power play. Painter on the far side. Painter back to Benedict. Canopliff up high as well. Benedict to Painter. Painter, low shot, deflects into the corner and out of play. Off black, it's white ball. Well, you can see the Montreal defense is really watching the crease. That's where most of the damage has come from tonight. They're allowing the top shooters to get a good shot on net, but Ottawa doesn't seem to be taking advantage of it. Evans was trying to get in around Crosby there, but couldn't do it. Tarbo, oh, nice scoop there by Benedict, but he can't make it go. Evans to Canopla. Benedict unloads. Good stop by Palador. He's looked really strong since a couple of early goals by the Rebel. Evans stop in the rebound. No, what? They are calling Priest. Priest, no more. Priest. Well, it was a good call. Evans' feet were definitely in the crease when he picked up that rebound. Disher's coming out. And he's got the loose ball in the corner. Devin Delete, for the record, in uh, Washington, leading all goaltenders in loose ball recoveries. And it, it, it's, you maybe think of the players more gill than the goalies, but uh, obviously when you see a goalie wander and recover, it can help the defense immensely. Opportunity knocking for Koloski. Amy Keynes with the follow-up, but... Well, you don't see that too often, Tracy Koleski. Missing the pass and going after the, the loose ball, stepped in the crease, and therefore Ottawa ball. Parnell actually had the rebound there. Boy, Painter gets thrown down the carpet pretty hard, and Barnes picks it up. And Merrill, I think, uh, switching hands there, it seemed like as he weaved through traffic, tried to get the shot on goal. Busting in is caught, and a great save by Disher. Jamie Roy will start things up, Gil. They're within two, and we've seen uh, not much in the way of scoring the last few minutes. Who does this benefit the most? Well, it's been end-to-end -end action, and there hasn't been the great opportunities to score, but they're definitely working hard to get the scoring chances going. I like this end-to-end -end lacrosse. It's, uh, it's exciting, it's great for the fans, and it's what Brad Waters wanted to see from both these teams at the end. they got to get it on goal, and they do. Polidor with one second on the 30. They'll get a reset, but uh, obviously it was. 
Montreal ball. And it will be when we come back. Molson Export, proud to bring you Ottawa Rebel Lacrosse here on the score. See a lot of behind an Ottawa bench this summer. Renegades head coach Joe Pow Pow. Finally, Joe, you've got some players. You're starting to put a coaching staff together. You guys have been busy. We are. You know, watching this game uh, this afternoon, there's some guys that I'm interested in. I kind of like the ruggedness of the sport and uh, the fast pace that it, uh, it, it showcases. If you can't find what you need here, it's the Canadian Collegiate uh, Draft. I guess you're looking ahead to now. Absolutely. You know what? Uh, we've got a work cut off for us. It's in about two months, and you know, there'll be a lot of players. Uh, you know, we'll be able to look at. Thank you very much, Joe. Taking in his first live lacrosse action, and the weather's been pretty good for Joe Papau here in Ottawa since he moved up from Hawaii. Back to you, Brian. Thank you for that, Patricia. And clearly, Joe Papau will enjoy his time here in Ottawa. How could you not, Gil? It's well, a great, great place to be. I, I would suspect that the Ottawa Renegades will do very well here in Ottawa. They are still football crazy. And they're hoping to get lacrosse crazy with a victory against the Montreal Express. Right now, Ottawa down by two. Still plenty of time to go. Just under seven in quarter number three as Disher tries to press the issue behind the goal along with Naganosh and others. Uh, I think you're right, too. I think the, once the Ottawa Rebel get a couple of victories under their belt, this town will be, they'll adopt this team hardly into the community. Pulaski taking some hacks and losing his helmet, so there'll be a high stick, if not uh, a double. And watch as Dowling goes to work as Rory Graham tried to slap it away with one hand on the stick. And another late one there. Ottawa better be careful not to lose their composure while temporarily down a man here before the official penalty gets called. So, I, we've certainly seen it before, Gil, where you take one and then you get ticked off about the one penalty and you take another yeah and there there is good penalties to take that was not one of them but sometimes you do take good penalties to set a tone or a message or prevent a goal there was no need for that they had good support on defense but taking penalties at critical times of the game allowing the team a power play and an explosive power play that montreal has could mean the downfall for ottawa we saw it in the last game where they gave up two power plays late in the game and thus with three minutes left we're down three goals after two power play goals and uh, pretty well ended the game for him. So Laverty's in the box. Harrison over to Dowling. Dowling to Harrison, lets it fly. Disher continues to look strong and look what we've got here. Two on one for the Rebel. Off the bar. Ryan Painter had Jamie Roy chose to do it himself, and he came awfully close. Absolutely. The defender there, I couldn't get his number, made no attempt at Ryan Painter, just took Jamie Roy out of the equation and let Palador work one-on-one -on -one with, with uh, Ryan Painter. And beat him, but hit the post. Could not beat that post. I've never seen a player beat the post yet. <laughs> Can uplift now with it. That's about the limit of the slash. Remember, Ottawa killing the penalty here. There are two seconds to go on the 30, so they exhaust 30. that. And now go back on defense and try and kill the remainder. With the score 9 and 7, time for a sports update. Montreal Canadiens just one loss in their last six. Hosting the Sharks today, it was one apiece when number 94, Doug Gilmore, gets it to number... Number 93, Doug Gilmore. Number 94, Yannick Crow. Number 95, Sergey Berezin. Scores his first. 10,000th at home. The Ottawa Rebels just continue to make offensive threats while they're shorthanded. Already two shorthanded goals and still trying for more. There comes the Evans. Play. And he had Palador thinking low and shot high there. Good decision by Evans. Just missed the mark. You know, it seems that Ottawa gets more offensive chances while they're shorthanded with only four men on the floor than they do with five on the floor. It's a it strange game, isn't it, Brian? Yeah, it seems they've had a pretty good performance from Matt Disher in this third quarter as well. Oh, absolutely. He's come up big with some key saves at critical times. Dowling sticks up for 
Rebel defenders. Koleski behind the back. Shot there. Goes off the post. You can't beat that post, Gil Neuendijk likes to say. No, I've tried a few times, but no. Laverty out of the box. It's all even. And the rebound just narrowly misses Ryan Painter, who would have had an easy putback if he'd been able to cradle the ball. Absolutely. But good transition game from Ottawa with the man out of the box going up floor and taking a good solid shot at net. Cod finds a man before he makes the change. It's Jason Crosby on the near side. Trying to go around Naganosh. So far, unsuccessful. Nifty back pass and up and over. Not quite as uh, Todd Richard tried to beat Matt Disher. Well, that was good defense by Naganosh, who was basically left all by himself to go one-on-one -on -one and made a good defensive stand until support finally, finally arrived. Montreal Express with a two-goal lead on the Rebel and on the road. Montreal has not lost away from the Molson Center this year at 2-0. Trying to improve their overall mark to five and two. Benedict with six on the shot clock. Benedict again. They seem. I don't know whether it's Palador standing his ground better or the Rebel shots uh, seeming to just not be finding their spots the way they were earlier. No, they got to get inside more. They're, the long shots. Montreal has taken the given them the long shots, so they're not going in. You got to get the ball down to the crease, just like Montreal is doing now. Wow, great reaction from Disher on a one-handed effort by Dowling right there. Gidon has it stripped away. Tarble tries to recover, helping out. Another Rebel in on the play. That's good defense, but obviously a little bit over aggressive. And the Rebel were technically in possession, didn't get it out over half in the 10 seconds allotted to them. Montreal still with a two-goal edge. Molson Export Rebel Lacrosse on the score. When near, appear distant. Go where they would not expect you. Create confusion. And take them. These are the rules. Prepare yourself. The T Mac. No one ever anticipates that life might take a turn for the unexpected. But for the one in 12 Canadians who will be diagnosed this year with liver disease, life will suddenly become more precious because sadly, there's no cure. The amazing thing is, if we all work together, we can make a difference. Every day, researchers discover new miracles. And with your generous support, the Canadian Liver Foundation will continue its search to unlock the mysteries of a disease that always hits too close to home. Rated E for everyone. Welcome back to Molson X Rebel Lacrosse live on the score with Montreal Express player Tracy Koleski on pace to perhaps be the NLL scoring leader. But when I talk to you about the points you get in this game, you give credit to your teammate. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, you know, everyone's putting the ball in it. Everyone's getting chances. And when everyone else is getting chances, it just makes my job easier. So yeah, I was just going on that. This is a frustrating one against Ottawa this afternoon. A very physical game. Yeah, no, it's just loose balls and it's a game on the carpet. We just got to pick it up a little bit. You know, if we want to get the win here, we just got to pick it up and start picking up the loose balls. Thanks a lot, Tracy. This has been another Molson X bench report. Back to you, Brian. Thank you. With uh, Tracy Koleski's six points today, he is at least temporarily moved into a third place tie for the scoring lead in the NLL. And keep in mind, this is only game seven for the Montreal Express. You consider Caleb Toe at the top of the leader board with 61. He's played 10 and he'll play an 11th later today. And there's another guy to keep in mind when you think of the scoring race this year. The man who's going out on a high by the looks of things and Paul Gate who will play his last pro season indoors this winter and man is he flying 18 points this weekend alone in the Washington Powers two victories over the New York Saints you know it's the changing of the guards you got the old guards going out the gates and you got the new guards coming in Kaluskis and the John Grant juniors coming in. it's a it's an exciting time for lacrosse right now Oh, there's so many young stars. 
And Ottawa just hoping that they've found a couple in Stephen Evans and Chris Kanopoulos who've of late really come of age in the NLL. Dowling has been a veteran sniper for years and there is stopped by Matt Disher who in his own right is a young gun trying to establish himself in goal. Oh absolutely and I I feel sorry for these goaltenders in this league with the quality of shooters and the the speed and agility they have it, it makes it very very tough with an extra three inches on the on the nets this year. Delayed penalty on the play. Disher quick to hustle to the bench. Extra man on. 1.15 to go in the third quarter. Ottawa would love to get within one heading to the fourth. No look from behind. Two. So this will be power play number six coming up for the Rebel. They're two for five so far. Well, I hate to talk about critical times in the game, but after going six for eight the other night, only two for five, that, that's not good. And you, you figure if they were four for five, we'd have a tie game and they'd be going for the, uh, for the lead here. Well, they catch a break in that uh, a good defender and Bruce Codd is off in the box for Montreal, so maybe it'll open things up for the Rebel. Benedict, quick ball movement and a nice stop by Palador on Tarble. I tell you, Palador has come up with some big saves in the second half. That was a beauty. Just lifted the left shoulder to the stop. Uh, but great quick movement, was it not, by the Ottawa power play? Oh, excellent. Excellent ball movement, and that's using their creativity and making sure that you're making wise decisions with the ball. Maybe something they hadn't done, which led them to being two for five so far. So if they get the ball back on this power play, we'll see what else they can do there. It's Bendig stopped on the attack, and Disher throws a bit of a pick as well. Well, the key to, to the Ottawa power play is Konopoulos is not getting the shots. Right. When, usually when he shoots from that spot in the floor, he buries it. Do they know it? They're watching him. Now the ball's got to go down in the crease. They're watching Evans now, so it's got to come from the left-hand side, the left-hand shooters. Benedict winds up. Palador in an easy position. Tarble stopped on the rebound. Palador's been the story here in the third quarter. Full reset for Ottawa. They choose to get a quick shot off. Tarble lets it go. Palador sneaks away with the rebound away from an on oncoming Stephen Evans. Well, you're absolutely right. And it's uh, left-hand shooters, Tarble and uh, Benedict, getting the shots on net. But Palador is just coming up huge. 48 seconds to go in the Montreal penalty. Ottawa goes to the attack when the fourth quarter begins. That'll be after this break. This is Molson Export Rebel Lacrosse on the score. Is that supposed to be fun? Introducing a vehicle designed for your adventures in reality. The all-new, more powerful CRV from Honda. From high on top of the Rocky Mountains comes a taste that's as cold and clean as glacier water, crisp as Arctic air, and with more than 125 years of brewing tradition. It's a taste that always goes down easy. Hey, Bill, why are you talking like that? Coors Light, the silver bullet.
Introducing the V-Box. Phone, text, email. First from Rogers AT&T. Imagine. Molson Export Rebel Lacrosse on the score is brought to you by the Ottawa Renegades. Ottawa Renegades football is coming to the nation's capital this summer. Season tickets are coming even sooner. Call now to purchase your tickets. Ryan Duff, Gil Neuendijk, Patricia Bull inside the Corral Center as we get set for the fourth quarter. And the man taking a little sip of the water is a man you know very well, Gil. Well, Cam Devine, I had the privilege of playing lacrosse with him back in Whitby, and we won a Minnow Cup together. But he's been credited with this offensive turnaround from the Ottawa Rebels, scoring, scoring many more goals than they have in the, all year. And Cam Devine is one of the leaders when it comes to scoring goals from his days in junior lacrosse. You know, I asked him about it before the game, how he became, and like, I mean, the numbers are staggering, Gil. The guy had 247 points one year playing junior A lacrosse, and he goes, but it was a 28-game season, he says. Well, you, you know why he got that many points, because I was doing all the dirty work for him. It's funny, he never mentioned that. <laughs> now he's uh, running the show uh, as far as general manager in Aurelia in the summertime, and uh, obviously knows the Sandersons quite well from the Junior A battles as well. Well, he also has the assistant coach of the Columbus Landsharks on his roster there in Aurelia, Wayne Colley, a former teammate of his in Whitby also. As they were Minto Cup winners back in 1980. Right now, the Rebels just seeking win number two on the year. They're up, or down rather, by two. And Matt Disher's trying to close that gap. Obviously, Ottawa unable to cash in on the power play to start this fourth quarter. So the uphill battle continues. Well, it's do or die time for the Ottawa Rebel, Brian. Down two goals with 13 minutes left in the game. Amy Keynes into the goal. Great save by Disher. Well, it's been the goaltender's clinic here tonight, uh, Brian. Matt Disher has come in and played very solid, and Palador has come up big. And that last power play attempt by Ottawa, he made three or four big, big saves. Picks up another loose ball there as Pacey runs the floor. Slows it up. Pacey. Eric Pacey. Into the middle. Pacey will make the change. Richard takes it on the near side. He's got Bendig going far side. And in the middle, he's got Amy Keynes for a goal. Textbook pick and roll right there, Brian. Set the pick, draw the defender, then go to the net, receive the pass, and put it, make sure it hits the mesh. Watch. Richard has the ball and a, maybe a push off more than a pick by Amy Keynes, but nonetheless, the ball found the mesh and uh, they got a three goal lead now. 10 7 is the score. As Amy Keynes was a player that Terry Sanderson was counting on for more. And he's delivered with a couple of big goals in this one. Well, their game plan was to get the ball moving around so Dowling and Koleski does they don't take such a beating and that's exactly what's happening Some of these other players are starting to step it up a bit for, on behalf of Montreal Well, remember this is uh, I don't want to call it a training camp But uh, almost a tryout process for some of these rebel players under the new watchful eye of Lindy, Lindsay Sanderson from the last game to this one a change of three players in the Ottawa lineup is Tasse, Raffin, and Donnelly are sitting. Dan Merrill, Kurt Johnston, and Sam Cook are in. And if they're ever going to make an impression, be it defensively or offensively, now's the time with Ottawa down by three. Benedict running the outside. Gets it nicely in. Evans checked, but still goes hard to the goal. Pushed from behind into the crease, and it is Montreal ball. Well, one of the keys of the game for Montreal was to stop Chris Kanopoulos, and so far Kanopoulos has been stopped with five goals the other night in Montreal. I don't believe he's got a goal here tonight. I believe you are correct. The Buffalo Sabres went looking for win number four in a row in Washington at the MCI booth. They scored late in regulation to tie it at two apiece. This in overtime. Alexei Zhitnik from the point and watch Stu Barnes. Great tip to make it 3-2 Buffalo. Four in a row for the Sabres. It's back to Canada. Ottawa in possession, Gill. What do you see the need for them to do to create a little more against Palador here? 
Well, they're getting to the net, and they're getting good scoring opportunities. The unfortunate part, Palador is coming up big. Just keep doing more of the same, and I'm sure everything will turn out their way. Painter it's all a matter side. of confidence, Brian. Just yeah. confidence. Jamie Roy getting some help from Graham there. And this is part of the different look for the Rebel, having guys like this in the offensive zone, players that can play both ends of the floor. And that's exactly what Lindsey Sanderson wants. He wants two game, two way players, none of the stereotyping of an offensive player and a defensive player. He wants guys that can run both ends of the floor and make an impact at both ends. Tracy Kaluski with 13 on the shot clock. Kaluski near side to Richard. Richard sees a little bit of an opening, but Disher closes that. Picked up off the floor, it's Laverty. It's guys like Laverty, middlemen, midfielders, if you want to call them that, even though it's more of a field term, that, that play such a crucial part of Lindsay's game. When you think of the first game that they played under Lindsay in Albany, they lose 18-17. They had 11 different goal scorers. They, they only had four different snipers against Montreal on Friday. You have to have a supporting cast that chips in. If not with two, then with at least one. Oh, absolutely. And, and the beauty part is they're oh, well, after the buzzer. They're young. They're 21 years of age. Roy, Laverty, Graham. All young midfielders, as you say, but they can play both ends, but they got to start putting the ball in the net if they want a job here next year. Oh, nice stop by Disher there on Amy Keynes. That could have been the crushing blow, but it's still a three-goal Montreal lead and 10-10 to go. Disher, another save right there. As Dowling had the possession. Disher runs it up now. Rory Graham. As Ottawa makes the change, Guidon also goes for the change, and DJ Sear is on. Again, this is what we talk about. DJ playing more of a defensive role in the first half here. Tries to run down the middle. Bounce shot doesn't get through Palador. As he tried to bounce it through the five hole, but obviously the stick got down before the bounce could happen. Well, they're going to the net and they're getting opportunities. And I can't stress enough how well Palador is playing. Ottawa approaching the 50 shot mark. generally like to be in that 55 to 60 range to at least know that you've given it that kind of an effort being outshot 54 45 as we speak Montreal pressuring the ball with Bendix scooping up in the corner and Richard now in possession he's got Harrison out there as well Ooh, shot from long red look out Koloski had an open look on the rebound but couldn't uh, pick it up cleanly Laverty ties him up we've got a timeout I think on the floor Montreal up by three. Molson Export, proud to bring you Ottawa Rebel Lacrosse on the school. The Wolf has been linked to more than a dozen bombings in the last decade. with Lisa Bowes catching up with Melanie Turgeon and the rest of the Canadian women's alpine ski team. Sports access on the score and our next telecast on the score. Washington Power led by the gates and right now leading the Eastern Division at 6-2 and two in to face the Rebel on Friday, February 22nd. Paul and Gary Gate and Del Halliday. And Del Halliday. Don't forget him. He's been a great addition. The former Rebel captain has had a wonderful year for the power so far. Where's your sign? Where's your sign? Mike Benedict leads the Ottawa rush. Matt Disher's going to the bench. They're starting to pull out the wild cards, Gil. Creativity, a little run and gun. They got to do something different to try and beat Palador. Benedict, Canopliff. Canopliff shot stopped by Palador. Didn't see exactly where the rebound went, but it does go to the Rebel. They'll like that. They get a new 30 with which to work. They have to be mindful of the fact they don't have a keeper. Oh, it snuck behind Palador out the other side. You know he's hot when he doesn't have a clue where it is, and it's not getting in behind him across the line. 
Come on, Gil, I defy you to tell me who actually has possession of the ball in the corner right now. I don't know. It looks like Pee Wee, <laughs> it looks like tight hockey where all, all 10 players on the floor go after the puck. I can't believe there hasn't been an infraction of some nature yet, but they let them play. And it's scooped out. Palador's got the ball, and Disher, while that was happening, was able to scramble back, and it's a good thing because Crosby's one-on-one. -on -one. Crosby scores! Jason Crosby, four goal, Montreal lead. Wow, what a turn of events. About a 30 second hustle in the corner, tussle in the corner, and nobody clearly coming up with the ball. It finally makes its way to Palador, who quickly gets it up floor to Jason Crosby. With these extra big nets, not much of a chance for uh, Matt Dish, who has played very, very well in the Ottawa goal this second half. I mean, Crosby just knew what to do with it. But it's uh, pulling out all the stops by the Ottawa Rebel, trying to get some offense going. And uh, I think what they need to do is take uh, Palador out of the net. Yeah. He, he's come up with some big saves at key situations of the game. Express with uh, three goals in the second half. So Matt Disher has played well, but Ottawa's mustered just two. So while trailing by three at the break, they now find themselves down by four with seven and a half to go. The good news is, Gil, while we've often...